Okay. We're ready to get started. We'll start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Welcome to the August 24th, 2015 meeting for the Shawnee County Board of County Commissioners. My name is Kevin Cook. I serve as the chair, also representing District 2. Joining me today is Commissioner Shelley Bueller, representing District 1. Morning. Good morning. And Commissioner Bob Barcher, representing District 3. Good, Good morning. morning. Madam Clerk, if we can start with our first item. First item is item 3, consent agenda. Are there any questions or requests regarding the consent agenda? Move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Motion by Commissioner Archer to approve the consent agenda as presented. Seconded by Commissioner Bueller. <coughs> All in favor say aye. All opposed. Passes three to zero. Next item. Item four, new business A, county clerk number one, consider all voucher payments. Vouchers are totaling $567,622.84. Of those, uh, public works with the asphalt projects is uh, $130,291.53. Um, Kansas uh, with the vehicles, $88,357.01. And then district court, $76,017.65. And no questions, and I'll move approval. Motion by Commissioner Bueller for approval of the vouchers. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. All opposed. It passes three to zero. Next item. Item A2, consider correction orders. I'll make a motion to approve the correction orders. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Cook to approve the correction orders. Seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor say aye. All opposed. Passes three to zero. Next. Item B, coroner number one, update on coroner's office. As Dr. Glenn is approaching, I might just, uh, as a point of reference, I had asked Dr. Glenn if he would be able to come to speak to us just as to how things were going. Um, several months ago, we entered into a contract with the uh, coroner's office, uh, basically making it a completely independent contractor. <coughs> Good morning. Um, bear with me. Uh, Jane told me how to do this, but um, there's no guarantee I can do it. Charlie Glenn and I serve as the coroner for Shawnee County and we're here today to provide an update uh, about the activities of our office and the direction that we see ourselves going in the next year. Um, and our mission statement, I promise you this will be the only time I read a slide, uh, to provide accurate, timely, dignified, compassionate and professional death investigative services for the citizens of Shawnee County. It's a lot of um, descriptive terms there but each one is very meaningful to us and we serve the citizens of Shawnee County through a lot of different ways and sometimes directly actually most frequently directly when we deal with families and help answer a number of questions and, and provide a number of different services to them the legal community both sides of the legal community frankly um, law enforcement we work with them all the time the medical community at Stormont Vale and St. Francis um, public health community through the local health agency and the State Department of Health. Um, there's a number of functions we work with. Funeral homes, obviously, we work with every day. Organ and tissue donation is something that we, um, we it's our goal to be, uh, work with them every chance we can. And county cremation service as well. And our office is small. Um, there's five of, five of us and we're able to provide 24 7 coverage with two full-time investigators two part-time investigators and me the coroner and pathologist um, this is just a reminder for me to introduce our inv full-time investigators Kristen Rao in the in the back and Annette Carper in the back and um, they're 
I consider myself very lucky to be working with them, and I just wanted to say thank you. Um, you know, they're very dedicated, and 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 really, uh, despite the fact that they're not county employees, they're dedicated public servants, and um, they provide a, a great service. Um, you know, we're we've reorganized things in May, and so far it's been a very positive thing, um, and it's evolving, and hopefully it'll keep keep evolving for the next for as long as I'm here. Uh, we want to keep improving, and that process has started, and I hope it doesn't stop. <coughs> and training activities is part of that. Um, we have people going to a local training next month and to Miami for forensic photography a month after that. So we're trying to improve in-house and out of the house. Um, <coughs> one thing that I think some people will be interested in, we've started, reinstated our annual reports. It's a lot of work. Um, that goes into these, and it's really just a statistical document that details the type of deaths in Shawnee County. If you do it every year it's, and make it public, publicly accessible, then you're able to compare trends and really monitor things. It hasn't been done for a period of time up until this year. One of our goals in the next year is to kind of backdate some of them so we know where we're at in 2014 and 2015. Um, so since May, uh, we've been involved in about 255 investigations. This is, correlates with 57 autopsies and 12 external examinations. This is about where we want to be at. A uh, county of this size, by national recommendations, we should be having about 180 autopsies a year. So that's about 15 a month, and that's where we're at. Um, and external examinations, just so you understand, that's we don't always autopsy someone when we do an examination. We um, might just review the medical records and, and look at the body to make sure that there's no injuries. It would prompt a further, prompt an autopsy. Um, some in the past and in some other counties, this ratio is a little skewed and people do more of these than what, what the ratio here represents. So what I'm trying to tell you is we're doing it, uh, all that we can do. Um, just to, this is an easy thing to follow and it gives you some sense of our performance. Um, most of our performance isn't so easy to put on a graph, but this is just our turnaround time of our reports. This goes all the way back to 2008, um, and there you can see that on average it was taking about 80 days to get an autopsy report out after that time of autopsy. This number has been well over 100, um, really up until I started here. And then basically from May, this, num this graph right here represents from May till now. And so we've made some Im initial improvements that are reflected in this graph. Um, we think we can make get this number down to about 30. I mean, that's my goal. Um, it's in everyone's interest to, to, to work towards that, and not just ours, but the people we serve. So that's another one of our goals. And then next year, hopefully, we'll show that improvement. Um, but we do a lot of things outside of the coroner's office, and you know this is, involves community outreach and education. So that's giving talks to local Rotary clubs and Sertoma clubs and Washburn University classes, and having people come in to do training at our facility. Um, we're involved in the local fetal infant mortality review. Um, that's through the health department. Um, I'm, excited about this one. It's maybe a little bit initial to talk about it, but we're trying to uh, start a grief services program um, with cooperation with uh, the police department and also some individuals from Mid Midland Hospice. And this is, there's a real need for this um, in our community, in any community, frankly, but um, we, we would serve as kind of a feeder and, and then there's some mechanisms in place and so we're trying to coordinate things a little bit better. Uh, for these families who go through these tragedies. Uh, we participate in the local morbidity and mortality conferences. Again, what I'm trying to paint the picture here is that it's, we're trying to go above and beyond. We don't just want to establish a cause of death. We want to use that information to affect the community in a positive way. And it, it, it's, our job is almost pointless if we're not doing this. And we have partnerships with the KDHE, um, their Office of Vital Statistics. We're I'm going to be helping train local physicians about proper death certification because we can all use it. Um, and we're also working with our uh, Center of Violence, de Violent Death Reporting. So these are 
all positive things. Our goals for the next year, um, you know, obviously we want to provide the best service we can, and we're just going to keep trying to do that. Um, to that end, we'd like to be, you know, we will have an auditor for name accreditation sometime in the next year. Um, and we've reviewed that process. We know where we're at, and I think it's <coughs> realistic to, to come here next year and tell you what, what's come of it. Um, we want to continue to really strengthen our mass hospitality planning. This keeps me up at night some nights when I'm feeling anxious. Um, worst case scenarios, it's, there's people in this community who do this, and so we have to make sure our role in that process is well defined and get to know them so if something like this happened, relationships are in place and we're able to step in and do what we do. Um, we want to have a we want to have a web presence um, that goes without saying so that should be soon and then we'd like going with the website is uh, we'd like to link up the, these annual reports that I was just saying through that um, make them accessible to anyone. Um, so that's kind of where we're at and the next couple slides really is a question that I have for the Commission. Um, but do we have any questions about Commissioner Archer? Let me guess. Name is National Association of Medical Examiners. Correct. Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> Just thought I'd take a stab at it. That's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Mueller. Yeah. Dr. Glenn, I just want to appreciate the work that you've done so far. I know that, you know, really your tenure here is still relatively new. You, you took some time re uh, reorganizing the office, getting the office to where you wanted it. We're seeing that already with the turnaround and the reports, and so I appreciate that you're documenting the reports and trends so we can see where we're going as a community. Um, and so I appreciate the work that you've already put in the office as well as the work from your staff. Um, and I know that they are very dedicated to what they do and making sure that, <coughs> that everything moves smoothly. So, Commissioner Archer. Well, I, w I was going to compliment Dr. Glenn also, but I wanted to wait until after we see the questions. Uh, I thought <laughs> I, I, <laughs> that he's got yeah. for the commission. I, thought I, I, I don't want to be now. premature. I thought I'd compliment him now. I may not want to after. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, where are we going? Uh, yeah, just really one big question. Uh, for us, it's a big question. You know, you guys have, big, have to do these things all the time, so it's probably not a big deal. Um, so just to review, county cremations, this is by statute a role that the county plays. Um, these are people, <coughs> basically unclaimed bodies, <coughs> and um, the county has to cremate them. And we basically do this, you know, that's one of the th things, services we provide. Um, now, unclaimed can mean different things. And so that could be someone who truly has no family. They're a very isolated person. That could be someone whose family is really poor and they don't have the money to, to provide uh, a service. It can also be someone who has a family that, for whatever reason, doesn't care to for, you know, provide a funeral service. Um, but they, may, they probably have the means, let's put it like that. So those are the three categories that we deal with. And to put it in perspective, we're talking about 15, approximately 15 times a year, 15 to 20 is how many county cremations we have. That number has gone up. Um, since 2011 because the state used to have a program for people who got benefits through SRS there was a funeral service benefit as well um, so since that it was eliminated approximately 2011 the numbers have gone up and that makes sense because really this is what we're talking about with that one the families without means there's plenty of them in our community um, I wish we could do something more for them um, but yeah, this is main. That's what goes on. So basically, they tell us we can't we can't do anything, and we say, okay, well, the county, you know, this is the process. And we go through the process, and occasionally they're on the consent agenda. Um, and really, the question I have for you, and I'm, I don't consider it our question to, to answer. I really would like some direction from from the public. Um, in the past, the remains were not made available to families, and that's because. That would provide an incentive for them not to cremate their loved one. Um, it would basically be a free funeral. And that uh, hurts the county financially, and it hurts local businesses. Um, and so that's a disincentive to doing it. The other side of this is that we have cremains at our facility, and there's family out there that would like to have them. And it's you know, hard to say no. And that's been the policy, and that's what our answer is. It's been the policy in the past. And so I don't expect an answer today. You know, if an email down the road would be would be great, um, 
but I would like to have some direction about what, which way you want to go. We're happy to go the same direction. There's arguments to be made for continuing the same way, and there's arguments to be made for changing things. Um, <coughs> that's, that's the question I have for you guys, and there's really no, um, no, no expectation for an answer today. Um, just to give you an idea of what we do, this is, what is it, West Lawn Memorial Gardens, this is out by what, Auburn Road um, and I-70. We intend to just to scatter the trimmings in a little in shallow burial right by this tree. In the past, there's a pond right over here, if you can imagine, where they, they were uh, scattered, but it's dried up. Um, we'd like to do some type of uh, recognition and probably involve uh, one of the pastors from the police department. Um, and just as a way of recognizing the human humanity involved in this. So that's kind of what we see happening. Um, the question I have really comes back to that. Um, since 2011, none of these cremains have been taken here. They're all, you know, they're on our shelf. And we need to do something about that. And there's families out there. We can go that direction. We can also just take care of it here. How many, at this point, what, what are we talking about? 25 to 30. Um, I would say that initially uh, my inclination would be to look to our county counselor <laughs> but I, to prepare maybe a report to the commission or guidance legally Well, the Commissioner Archer. Isn't there a consideration that when you have an independent contractor, you can't make a lot of decisions on how they operate? Uh, so I, I, I need. I think that needs to be considered also to to maintain the independence. I think that uh, the contractor needs. I think that you know again, looking to the county counselor, he may be able to weigh in on what is our role I, in the county. Can I say something? Yeah, I do appreciate you bringing this to our attention mm -hmm. because um, I, again, you said the humanity of it, mm -hmm. and, and I so appreciate you bringing this to our attention. But go ahead, Rich. And then there's some questions. Well, I, I believe the answer is going to be you're wide open with what you can do. But what I would prefer to do is sit down and give you a written analysis of this situation and go over the statutes and provide that to you here in the next couple of days. I, and I think that, you know, Rich, as outlined by <coughs> Dr. Glenn, there's a number of con considerations that enter sure. in. We have the humanity. We have uh, the economics, both from a business standpoint of the private funeral homes as well as those who do not have the financial aid to pay. Uh, legally, what are our obligations by statute? Um, also, as it relates to, it, the county has previously had litigation regarding West Lawn Memorial Gardens and its ownership. Um, so there's a number of issues that I think sure. need to be navigated before the commission can take a position. Mm -hmm. and so, but I, again, Dr. Yeah. Glenn, this is a this is a question that needs to be presented to the, to the board and for us to take on. And so I appreciate you bringing it to the board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. I might just add one more thing. I think that's the most comprehensive um, presentation I've seen from a coroner ever. Um, and it was simplified. It was easy to understand. I, I appreciate that as well. Yeah. And I also, I know you're an independent contractor, but uh, I certainly see the collaboration you're having with public works and, or with public public health, public health and with the police department and also with emergency management as well. So again, um, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Mr. Archer, any other? Yeah, I, I just wanted to compliment Dr. Glenn also, particularly looking at quantitative uh, results with levels and trends and comparisons. That's always meaningful to me and, and I certainly appreciate that. Uh, good job, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so I, I look forward to working with your office and uh, the council's office as we uh, reach a resolution for okay. this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, our next item. Item C, corrections. Number one, consider approval of request for out-of-state travel for one employee to attend the Annie E. Casey Foundation's uh, Conference on the Juvenile Detention Alternative Initiative in Phoenix, Arizona, to be paid by the Kansas Department of Corrections Juvenile Services Division with grant funds received from the foundation. Good morning, Commissioners. Brian Cole. 
uh, Department of Corrections. Before I get started, I also wanted to, to thank Dr. Glenn and his office. Uh, you know, we unfortunately at times have uh, in jail uh, deaths, and uh, you know, we have to uh, uh, work with their office. And uh, you know, sometimes they don't happen between eight and five. Uh, and uh, but he was very responsive and uh, helped us. And I worked with him for a little bit at the Department of Corrections. Very professional, very diligent, um, and was I just wanted to compliment him in his office. Mm -hmm. Uh, before you today is a request for out-of-state travel for one of our staff members uh, to attend a uh, national conference. This is a uh, not necessarily a uh, conference just to go see vendors, but this is an actual workshop in Phoenix, Arizona for the Juvenile uh, Alternative Detention Initiative. Uh, the person who we would like to uh, send has uh, about 17 years of experience. She also is the uh, the county local site coordinator for Northeast Kansas, Shawnee County, and deals with the Northeast Kansas with the juvenile uh, alternatives uh, or the JDAI, uh, excuse me. And uh, so um, this is a very good opportunity for us to continue to uh, uh, our agency to learn uh, where the uh, this initiative is headed, how we can better serve our community, our juvenile offenders, and we have seen tremendous benefits from uh, working in the JDAI, meaning that we've seen a reduction in population. We're seeing our uh, youthful uh, offenders that don't need to be incarcerated are getting, uh, uh, um, they're getting pointed towards uh, programs in the community instead of uh, where it's more expensive when you hold somebody in jail. Uh, and we're seeing better outcomes. We're seeing uh, not only that in the community, but we're also seeing in uh, uh, jail confinement, conditions of confinement, we're seeing those of, of uh, meaningful programs for the juveniles, which we will hear uh, soon come up and uh, uh, give you a presentation on the, uh, the juveniles. This is a very good program um, and we'd like to continue. We'd like to be able to send, like the memo says, uh, this, these funds are coming to us through the initiative. These are not uh, budgeted or allocated funds through our budget. And uh, at the, uh, re upon return, she will uh, be providing a, an out-of-state travel uh, and the goals and how to assess and help her, helps us. So I'd be, able, be happy to answer any questions you may have. Are there any questions regarding this request? Move approval. Second. Motion by Commissioner Bueller for approval of the out of state travel. Seconded by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. All opposed. Passes three to zero. Next item. Item C2 consider authorization and execution of contract C332 2015 with Sound Products Inc., a sole source contractor, to repair security equipment damaged from a storm on August 8, 2015 at a cost of $29,431.99, with insurance covering the damage with the exception of a $10,000 deductible. Good morning again, Brian Cole, Sunday County Department of Corrections. Uh, we had a recent storm here a couple weeks ago, uh, and uh, it did damage uh, approximately six of our cameras, four of those on the juvenile detention side, two of them on the adult. We did have backup cameras that were uh, that we can, we're able to use, but these are vital cameras that help us to reduce blind spots, to help us with our safety and security. Uh, we do have a sole source, uh, which I did meet with uh, Betty uh, in administrative services, uh, and I did meet with Cindy Beck regarding the uh, 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 submission of an insurance claim. Uh, the claim I don't think has been finished yet, uh, but uh, we do have the funds in our account to be able to pay for the deductible up to $10,000. Uh, should the claim be denied, Again, I've talked with Betty that we will come up with another or an alternative uh, funding source, but these are vital to our safety and security, um, and uh, we need to get these fixed, uh, and I'd uh, be happy to answer any questions you may have. I understand that was quite the lightning strike. It was. I was in my office when it happened. So it was, uh, uh, of course, I thought it was pretty cool. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't when I found out the damage, so yeah. it's bad weather. Any questions regarding this request? No. I'll make a motion to approve the expenditure to replace the video cameras. I'll second. Motion made by Commissioner Cook, second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. All opposed? Passes three to zero. Thank Next you. item. Item C3, update on construction of new kitchen at the adult detention facility. So for you to talk a lot longer, Cindy. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Good 
morning, Commissioners. Tim Phelps, Shawnee County Department of Corrections. I want to hand to you <coughs> a paper copy. October 2, 2014, the board authorized us to issue an RFQ for design build <coughs> services for a new kitchen uh, that would allow us to feed a thousand inmates. On January 29th, uh, we approved, uh, we received approval to negotiate with KBS builders for that purpose. Uh, we got an initial contract with them on April 6th, and then on June 1st, an amendment to the contract that set the guaranteed maximum price at three million five hundred fifteen three hundred sixty four dollars and a completion date of May 26 of next year. The progress so far is that we have uh, we had all of our documents, construction documents approved by state and local authorities and we've received our permits. They had to redirect the water supply for the fire suppression system and I'll show on a picture in a little bit here how that worked. We've received three invoices to date that have been issued and paid for a total of $363,566 after retainage, and this is about 10% of the GMP at this point. The exterior walls and support beam concrete footings have mostly been poured. There's a little bit left of that to do, and their expectation is to have the exterior structure up <coughs> and sealed by mid to late fall so then they can complete the work on the inside through the winter. Um, here are some as a, a drawing of the kitchen addition. It is the hard or the bold outlined area. As you see, it'll come off of the existing structure here and go into what was our backyard through that hallway. And um, you'll also see on this picture two arrows. One is blue, which represents the original direction for the, the fire <coughs> suppression system water supply and it went right under where the building was going to be constructed. So they had to redirect it, and that work has been completed uh, already. But that took a, about a month to get all that done, and that's why we are where we are today. And we also have had some little bit of uh, delays due to some of the rain we've had since this has been a relatively rainy season. This is a picture that was taken from the rooftop north of the construction site. As you can see on the uh, perimeter, almost all of it is in place except for over on the west side where they're bringing, they left that like that. They're digging it as we speak. But they left that as it was in this picture so they could get in there and do the other work. And now they're going to dig that up and pour that footing. Um, another photograph shows, this is if you're standing on part of the existing structure about a one, one story above. That's the hallway or the, the outline of the hallway from the existing structure into the kitchen. You'll see that they're staging to put the um, walls up, or at least part of the walls up, uh, with those cinder blocks. And that's what all those big wires are sticking up that rebar is to uh, tie into the walls. And then the last picture is kind of a spread view from the southeast corner of uh, the current setup of the structure. So there's a briefing of where we are, and if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Well, overall, though, we are on track with our plan, <coughs> and the, the, the rain caused some delay, but they have told me that they expect easily to make up that time. Uh, this is a very, um, not simple, but not really complicated structure so they're when they get on ground they move real fast and that's really impressive to watch this group go so I fully expect we're going to make it at least on time if not a little early and then if for a, a reminder the original uh, kitchen that we're replacing is the original kitchen for the facility yes and it was built to feed 187 inmates and we have our daily population about 500 uh, on the adult side and about 50 on the juvenile side. So we're well beyond our original capacity. So, all right, questions for? No, thank you for the Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
next item. Item D, Audit Finance, number one, consider awarding bid to Aramark for uniforms for the Department of Corrections and to Ameripride for all other departments. Good morning, Betty Greiner, Director of Administrative Services. I'm here as a representative of our uh, uniform committee. We uh, convened a committee that um, had a representative from each department that either used the, um, the uniforms or that had to deal with the uniforms through the, like the payment, the, um, the county clerk was part of our, our uh, committee. And I am bringing the recommendation to you that uh, for all departments other than the Department of Corrections, um, we recommend that we accept the bid for Ameripride. Uh, and then for the Department of Corrections, we recommend that they continue to use Aramark because they are the only company that provide the BDU uniforms. Now I had to ask what that stands for. <laughs> <laughs> it is battle dress uniform. That's their tactical uniform. And um, Aramark is the only uh, provider for those um, on a lease basis. So that is our recommendation to uh, go with Ameripride for all departments except for DOC and Aramark for DOC. So we ask for your approval of that. Commission, any questions regarding this request? Mm -hmm. I'll move. Make a oh, go ahead. I'll move to approve. Motion by Commissioner Archer to approve the request. Um, I will second. All in favor say aye. All opposed. Passes three to zero. Next item. Item D2, report on internal audit program. Good morning, Andrea Phillips, Internal Auditor. Um, today I'm here to give you an update on the Internal Audit Program. Uh, just to give you a little bit of information, some of the roles of an Internal Auditor is to monitor, assess, and analyze the risk and controls. Uh, when there's room for improvement, an Internal Auditor will make recommendations to enhance the current processes and procedures as the effective programs and controls must be in place uh, to prevent, detect, and deter fraud. Um, it's important to be aware of where fraud can occur and to continuously monitor and evaluate how adequate current in internal controls are. So in order to achieve these uh, objectives, I've created an auditing schedule um, with multiple tests and procedures and they'll be conducted on a monthly, um, quarterly, semi-annual, or annual basis. I'll be looking at every department and several different areas within those departments. Some of those areas will include internal controls, payroll, accounts receivable, and accounts payable. And in order to be as independent as possible, I can't go into specific details about the testing procedures. However, a few of the processes are going to include periodic review of the accounts, uh, cross-reference cross checks on accounts payable information, and then um, surprise visits to departments. Once an audit is completed, I will provide you with a memo or an audit report um, we'll, and that will explain the findings. And the goal is to provide you with at least one memo or audit report, report per month. Uh, these audits will provide reasonable assurance that current inter internal controls are effective, efficient, and will help to deter the occurrence of fraud. Uh, one additional technique that will assist with prevention and detection of fraud is a fraud hotline. Our goal is to have a hotline implemented by the end of the year. Um, it will be managed by a company completely independent of Shawnee County. Um, utilizing an outside resource, it provides assurance to employees that it's completely anonymous so that they will feel more comfortable making a report. We're currently in the process of finalizing proposals and we hope to have an item on the agenda within the next few weeks for your review. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Questions regarding internal audits? Commissioner Archer. Oh, I'm just going to thank you and thank Betty for uh, implementing an aggressive internal audit program. I think it's very, very important that the community knows that we're looking at all our processes to ensure uh, to the best of our ability that there's no fraud and deceit at Shawnee County. So, thank you. thank you. How long have we, this is, again, relatively new that we've started doing this. How long have we been working on this 
or the eternal audits? Um, that's a, I'm not sure what that time frame. We had started the program uh, right before I came, um, but it was in, you know, it was, it was brand new, so we were working towards that. Uh, we then lost the internal auditor that we had hired, and uh, so in that process, there was a little lag time there. So overall, we've been working on this for a couple years now. Okay. But uh, now that we have Andrea in place, um, and she's really ready to uh, just hit it hard. Yeah, okay. <laughs> very good. Very good. And so I think this is, a, as stated, this is a needed procedure. This is uh, one of those things that we can let the taxpayers know that we are taking the account serious, that we are uh, holding a high level of our fiduciary responsibility to make sure that we are maximizing all of the efforts that we have in the county. So thank you, Andrea, for your work. Yes. Great. Okay. Madam Clerk, our next item. Item 5, Administrative Communications. Are there any administrative communications this morning? Good morning, Commissioner Larry Mall, Shawnee County Treasurer. Uh, I know that you're already aware, uh, but I also wanted to make the public aware. We're having some uh, service issues at the Motor Vehicle Department uh, centered around the system. Um, it has become critical the last two Fridays uh, in the afternoon. The system has become very slow and, in fact, has kicked us off and refused to complete transactions. Uh, so critical that from about 2 o'clock on, on the last two Fridays, we've had to uh, turn customers away and our wait times have become two hours. Uh, I wanted the public to know that I find this unacceptable and we are working with uh, our IT department to get this fixed. Um, we think it's unique to Shawnee County because I'm not seeing uh, these issues with other counties and I have canvassed them. So something has happened in the last two weeks with our uh, communication between uh, KDOR and Shawnee County that's causing the system to slow down uh, to drop transactions uh, and uh, causing our wait times to exceed two hours. Now I'll contrast this with three weeks ago on July 31st which was a Friday, we handled over almost 800 customers in our office and the average wait time was about 20 minutes. So something has happened in the last two weeks um, that we are going to get to the bottom of and we'll get that fixed. Uh, I'm very pleased with the response from IT. Uh, I'll be more pleased when we finally figure out what the problem is and, and we don't have it. Um, I bring this up today because this is the last week of the month. Mm -hmm and we can expect that our office will handle somewhere between six and 800 people this Friday. So if at all possible, I urge the public to get into our office sometime during the week. Do not wait till Friday, because if this repeats itself, we will have total chaos, and uh, it's not something that uh, I want them to go through, and it's not acceptable to our department. I know that you're aware of it, and I know that uh, IT has taken some steps to increase bandwidth uh, that I hope will help, uh, but there's some other issues going on here, and they're working to get that fixed. And so bear with us. We're aware of it. We're not ignoring it. We will get this fixed, and uh, it's not the kind of service that we expect to give the public. Thank you for the update. Thank you. Any other administrative communications this morning? Good morning, Commissioners. Misty Kruger, Shawnee County Health Agency. Um, August is National Immunization Awareness Month, and as part of that, we've put together an event that will happen tonight at the Topeka Shawnee County Public Library at 6.30. Um, we'll be viewing the Nova Film Vaccines Calling the Shots, um, which takes people around the world to look at um, disease outbreaks that are based on people not being vaccinated. Um, it also addresses parents who are concerned about vaccinations and um, the risk of not being vaccinated. Um, after the film, we actually have a panel of local experts, including Dr. Pizzino, who's a county health officer, um, Dr. Cooley, who's a local pediatrician, and Andy Marso, who is a local meningitis survivor and um, vaccine advocate. And so we invite the public to come out and join us tonight at 6.30 and really um, have an open and honest conversation about vaccinations. Um, it's an opportunity for parents to ask questions they have about getting their children vaccinated um, and hear, you know, 
the pros and cons of doing so. Um, it's open to anyone and it's free. Um, it starts at 6.30 tonight at the public library. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Any other administrative communications? Commissioner Archer? No. Commissioner Bueller? No. I likewise uh, don't have a, <coughs> anything, so I, Madam Clerk, our next item. Item 6, executive session. Uh, there is not a need for an executive session today, so we are adjourned. Larry. <coughs> <coughs>